we're making 10 slow cooker meals in this mini slow cooker. I love this one because it has the low, high, and warm setting. Now, thank you to Laura for the idea to make single serving crock pot meals. I've been meaning to do this for a while. If you do have a large crock pot, don't worry. All you have to do is take a small oven safe dish, put it in the bottom of your big crock pot, and now you can just cook as you normally would without worrying about it burning because you have a large crock pot and are trying to cook a small meal. While these meals are very budget friendly, I'm not calling it an extreme grocery budget meal plan just because I'm using some spices. We're going to be using salt, pepper, bouillon cube, Italian seasoning, ground cumin, onion powder, thyme leaves, basil, and garlic powder. Here's all we got for $14.36. I got 3.05 pounds of chicken legs, two small sweet potatoes, a bag of frozen broccoli florets. I also got a chicken stuffing mix, a box of these shell pasta. It's a shells and cheese, three cheese pasta blend a can of cream of mushroom soup, a can of spinach, a can of tomato paste, two potatoes, and a bag of brown rice. I had some brown rice on hand, so rather than buy, I took what I had on hand and weighed out one pound and used those for these meals. We came to $14.36, which is $1.44 per meal. Now in my last video, I was struggling to cut off chicken off the bone and several of you commented to go and sharpen my knives, which I did. But thank you to Annette who also gave the tip to put your chicken in the freezer for a few minutes just so that it would get firm again. And that really did some magic on this chicken and made it way easier to cut off the bone. I sliced the meat off of two of the chicken legs and set aside the bones to boil for broth later. Then I added a half of a cup of the stuffing mix into a bag and just banged it really well with my uh, rolling pin and then put it into that little container. Just so you can see, it's about a fourth a cup of breadcrumbs in the end. These will be our breadcrumbs to make our meatballs. I also added an eighth of a teaspoon of salt to the mixture. I mixed it well, then formed the meatball shapes. This made about 14 meatballs. I then took two more of our chicken legs and cut the meat off in chunks this time instead of grinding up. Then I took all of the bones that I had left and put them in my big crock pot and just let it simmer and make some bone broth. You can make this over the stove or in your small crock pot. You would just need to do it in several batches. This is eight cups of water and four of our chicken legs. Two of our chicken legs we're keeping whole for different dishes. After simmering for about eight hours, I took the bones out, took the meat off the bones, and then strained the broth. Our first recipe is going to be this potato broccoli chicken with stuffing. Take one chicken leg, place it in the bottom of your slow cooker, then take one of your potatoes and cut it into large cubes or large chunks. Add them into the bottom of the slow cooker as well on either side of the chicken leg. You'll then add a half a teaspoon of garlic powder, a half a teaspoon of thyme leaves, and a bouillon cube. I like the herbs that are included in the bouillon cube, so that's why I've used it in a lot of the meals. You can, of course, add your own salt mixture or salt blend, or if you're watching your sodium, you could use a salt substitute as well. I added two thirds of a cup of water and then put the lid on and let this simmer for about two hours. I cooked all of my meals on high for this video, but if you are wanting to cook on low, you can double the time and that's about how long it will take for you to cook this meal on low, so four hours instead of two. During the last 15 minutes of cook time, I added two thirds cup of the broccoli florets. Then I poured all of this out onto my plate. Don't worry, you're gonna see there's a lot of liquid. I decided to pour everything out onto the plate, then pour the liquid back into the crock pot to make our stuffing mixture. I have been using the word crock pot a lot interchangeably for slow cooker. I know crock pot is the official brand name. This slow cooker is a 1.5 quart. It's the Elite Gourmet brand and I'll put a link for it in the description box. I found this one to be really useful and very consistent in its cook times as well as being very budget friendly. Currently it's about the same price as all the meals in this video. 
As you saw, I poured the liquid back into the crock pot, added a half a cup of our stuffing mixture, then stirred and put the lid back on for about 10 minutes to let it heat fully. I then fluffed it with a fork and poured it onto the plate. And here you have your finished first meal. This one was very delicious. I love that it has separate different uh, dishes in this one dish. I think sometimes when you do crock pot meals, it does end up being a lot of soups in one pot meals. So this was fun to have different separate elements with the stuffing being separate from the broccoli and the potatoes. And that chicken leg was so tender and delicious. Next, we're making creamy chicken sweet potato and brown rice. You'll take one small sweet potato and cube that up, add it to your slow cooker, then add a third of a cup of cubed chicken. I added a third a cup of our cream of mushroom soup, along with one cup of water and one half a cup of our brown rice. Then I added a fourth a teaspoon of onion powder and a fourth a teaspoon of garlic powder and a fourth a teaspoon of salt. You can use a salt substitute as well. I gave this all a good stir, then added the lid on and let it simmer for two hours on high. After two hours, I took the lid off, everything was well cooked, I gave it all a good stir, and then plated the meal. I added a few chopped green onions on top for garnish, and here's our complete meal. I have found over the years that brown rice and dark meats are the best thing in slow cookers because brown rice takes longer to cook so it doesn't get mushy like white rice and dark meat is harder to dry out in a crock pot than white meat is. Now we're making chicken meatballs and pasta in tomato sauce. I had put our meatballs in the freezer to let them set up. I took seven of the meatballs and popped those into our crock pot, added in tomato paste, which if you've ever watched Julia Pachenko, she makes a lot of budget-friendly meals for families on YouTube as well, and she taught me this trick. If you open both ends of the tomato paste, you can push it up kind of like a push pop, and it just makes it a lot easier to scoop the tomato paste out. Here I'm adding three tablespoons of tomato paste over top of our meatballs. Then I'm adding one cup of water, a fourth a teaspoon of Italian seasoning mix, and a fourth a teaspoon of salt. I also added a fourth a teaspoon of garlic powder, which I forgot to video. I gave this a little bit of a stir, then put the lid on and let the meatballs cook thoroughly. This took about an hour and a half on high. I then added three fourths a cup of the shells from the box of mac and cheese and a half a cup of the canned spinach that I had drained into the mixture and then put the lid back on and let everything come to a simmer and cook that pasta thoroughly. This took an additional 30 minutes on high. I took the lid off and stirred everything together to make sure everything was well combined, tested the meatballs to make sure they were cooked thoroughly and plated the meal up. I did also want to show you the inside of one of the meatballs because as you'll see, it's a little bit pink because we're using dark meat, but this is up to temperature and is delicious and safe to eat. Now we're making a mushroom brown rice risotto and cumin chicken. To your slow cooker, you'll add one third cup of brown rice. And then you'll see I have a big container full of chicken broth. I kept this in the fridge throughout the week as I made each of these meals. I added one cup of the chicken broth, a quarter of a cup of our cream of mushroom soup, then stuck my chicken leg inside the slow cooker, then added a fourth a teaspoon of salt, an eighth a teaspoon of ground pepper, and a half a teaspoon of our ground cumin. I especially put the ground cumin on top of the chicken so that it would really sink in as it was cooking. I popped the lid on and let this cook for two hours on high. You could do four hours on low as well. Took the lid off and check the temperature of the chicken to make sure that it reached at least 165 degrees, which it did. I then added a half a cup of our broccoli florets and popped that lid back on and let it steam for about 15 minutes on high. I gave this all a good stir and then it was ready to plate. I used my kitchen shears to cut up a couple of my green onions that I always have on hand. I grow them in my windowsill and in my garden out front. This meal was so comforting. The chicken was very tender and I love the flavor the cumin added to the chicken. 
The risotto was very creamy. I love how brown rice gets so nice and soft, but not mushy in the crock pot. Now we're making cheesy chicken meatballs and sweet potato. To your slow cooker, add your remaining seven chicken meatballs that we made earlier, one of your small sweet potatoes, a half a cup of chicken broth that we made earlier. Take the packet of cheesy sauce mixture out of the box of mac and cheese and add a tablespoon of that on top of the meatballs. Then you'll add your seasonings, which will be a half a teaspoon of garlic powder and a fourth a teaspoon of salt. You can use a salt substitute or you can add your own seasoning flair to this dish. It's pretty versatile and accepting of other flavors if you want to add them. You'll stick your lid on and cook this on high for two hours or four hours on low. Take the lid off and stir those meatballs just to make sure they get well coated in the cheese sauce. Then you're ready to plate. When you plate, you'll cut your sweet potato open and mash it out so that it's flattened. And I top mine with a little bit of my green onion from my garden. Next, we're making chicken stuffing and steamed broccoli. To your crock pot, you'll add one third cup of your chicken that's cut into chunks. Add one cup of your chicken broth. Then add a fourth a teaspoon of salt or salt substitute. Cover this and let it cook on high for two hours. Now add one and a third cup or just fill your two thirds cup measure twice with the chicken stuffing mixture. I gave the stuffing mixture a good stir. Then I took a small microwave safe bowl and placed it on top of the stuffing. Added two thirds cup of our broccoli florets and a pinch of salt and pepper onto those broccoli florets. I just wanted those to steam and I wanted to keep them separate this time around. You can of course just mix them into your stuffing mixture and pop the lid back on. You're going to place the lid back on and let this steam for about 10 more minutes of cook time and everything should be fully cooked, softened, and the broccoli will be steamed well. I then fluffed the stuffing up with the fork and plated everything. This one turned out to be one of my favorite meals. It might be that it's getting closer and closer to Thanksgiving or just that I really like stuffing. It's delicious and it reheated really well. This one definitely felt like the perfect fall meal with the cozy element from the stuffing and the chicken. Now we're making tomato potato spinach rice with chicken. And yes, I had to say tomato potato because that's just fun to say. I took a half of our other potato, cut it into cubes, added it to the slow cooker, then added a third a cup of our brown rice. We still have a fair amount left as you see. I added one cup of chicken broth, a fourth a cup of our meat that we had taken off the bone. This is cooked meat. Added one fourth a cup of our tomato paste and then stuck the lid on and cooked this on high for about two hours. I did also add a chicken bouillon cube just to give it a little bit more herbs and spices and some salt to soak in during the cook time. During the last 10 minutes of the cook time, I added a half a teaspoon of ground cumin and a fourth a cup of our drained canned spinach. You can, of course, add fresh spinach or you could add spinach that is frozen. Those would both be really good options. I actually used this type of canned spinach, even though I listed great value as the brand to use because I already had it on hand. Usually when I'm making these videos, I'm looking in my cupboard, seeing what I have on hand and making meal plans around that and not going out to buy a lot of ingredients. So I use canned spinach in this one, but you could use more broccoli. Carrots would be really good in all these recipes substituted instead of the sweet potato if you don't have sweet potato on hand. Or you could substitute peas, corn, or green beans for any of these recipes. Now we're making a cheesy potato broccoli rice soup. I took my remaining half of a potato, cut it into very small cubes, added that into my slow cooker. I added a tablespoon of the cheesy packet mix that comes with the mac and cheese, added a third a cup of our brown rice, and a fourth a cup of the cream of mushroom soup that we have on hand, then two cups of our chicken broth that we cooked up earlier and a half a teaspoon of garlic powder. I also added one chicken bouillon cube, gave everything a really good stir and popped the lid on. I cooked all of this for two hours on high. This one would be a really good one to cook on low if you're wanting a nice warm comforting soup at the end of the day. You would cook this for four hours on low. 
once that rice is tender, I added a half a cup of broccoli florets, which I cut up finely, then a fourth a teaspoon of salt, an eighth a teaspoon of pepper, and a half a teaspoon of garlic powder. Gave everything a really good stir and poured it into my bowl. I got to eat this meal out on my front porch, which was perfect. It was so nice and cozy to eat, and it's just starting to get cool enough where soup is the perfect food here. Next up is chicken with cheesy garlic rice to my slow cooker. I added the remaining rice. We had almost a whole cup of rice, one fourth cup of our cooked dark meat, two cups of chicken broth, a third a cup of our cream of mushroom soup, two tablespoons of our cheesy packet that is left, then one chicken bouillon cube, stirred everything and popped the lid on, let this cook on high for two hours. After two hours, I took the lid off, stirred everything, then did the same thing I did earlier where I took that small microwavable container, placed it on top of the rice mixture, and added a half a cup of our frozen broccoli, which was the last of the frozen broccoli, into the container, added some salt and pepper to the broccoli, and popped that lid back on until it was fully steamed. This took about 15 more minutes. This chicken cheesy garlic rice was delicious and it made a huge portion. You might even be able to eat this for two meals or to pad one of the other meals if for some reason it wasn't enough food. This is definitely the meal to make if you're really hungry. Our last meal we're making is this tomato basil chicken and pasta. You're going to be using the very last of your tomato paste, which is two thirds a cup. I filled that same two thirds cup measure with water twice, so a cup and a third of water. Add one bouillon cube, a fourth a cup of your chicken that's off the bones, that should be the last of the chicken, a teaspoon of dried basil, or you could use fresh, and a half a teaspoon of garlic powder, then stirred until combined. I'll let you in on a little bit of a secret. I was planning on making this into a tomato soup, but I underestimated the potency of tomato paste, which was kept thickening. Every time I added water, it still kept thickening. So after letting this cook on high for two hours, I added a cup of water, the remaining noodles, which was two thirds a cup of noodles, a fourth a cup of spinach, which is the last of our spinach, and one more bouillon cube and gave it all a really good stir. Added that lid back on and let it cook for 30 more minutes to let that pasta fully cook. After the pasta was fully cooked, I added a teaspoon of ground cumin. I love tomato and cumin as a flavor combination. Then added salt and pepper to taste. I also ended up adding at work a packet or two of sugar because I do like my pasta to have a little bit of a sweetness. But if you like your pasta sauce with a little bit of a tart edge to it, then this will be perfect as is. I topped mine with a couple of little slivers of the green onion just for some color. And here we have it. 10 meals. We've used all of our ingredients up with no waste and we use this mini slow cooker. I hope you enjoyed. Thanks for watching and for all the great ideas. Please keep them coming and I will be making more of these videos. I'll see you in the next one.